Who knew healthcare was this complex? Anyone with with a pulse who's yes. been paying attention. For some people, the costs aren't covered at all by the insurance. And, right. and there's women that are finding that out. We have to help the employees with their their family, yeah. their spouse, and their kids. Are these doctors incentivized to keep claims down for the carrier? I'm not there yet. People don't understand it. And it's one of the largest contributing factors to a recessionary period going forward, a downturn in our economy. Well, to think that the speed is going to slow down is foolish. This particular circumstance hasn't existed since right before World War II. I think colleges are in trouble. If you don't own a stock and you don't own a house, you're doing the same thing you did 15 years ago and everybody else just got really rich around you. A recession, uh, by all accounts, is the number one threat to, to, to Trump right now. It's going to happen. Oh, it's going to happen. Period. Hey, did you see this thing? Um, I think it was the CEO of Verizon came out and said uh, he was talking about a coal, a 5G coal war between, I just saw it briefly, between the U.S. and China. That they yes. were this concern about whether or not they would end up being basically two different types of compatibility, essentially. Mm-hmm. To where it, I guess the way I looked at it is kind of like having an iPhone and an Android that they don't really talk to one another. They like have to, two totally different platforms and ways to get to 5g yeah it seems like um this is i've heard i've heard of this a lot that there's it's the first time since the 40s that there have been two superpowers mm-hmm. and one is vying for position over the other and has a legitimate like pathway forward right and some people are suspecting that 5g might be how china overtakes the u.s or right. att- a- attempts to overtake the u.s sure and until until very recently, I thought 5G was just a faster network. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I didn't put the pieces together as far as, like, okay, we went from 3G to 4G, now to 5G. That just means I'll be able to connect to the internet faster. Sure. But I've seen the, some people have broken it down for me and they explain, like, how it changes the connectivity all over the world and how it changes everything that we do mm-hmm. and how China has been on the cusp of this from the creation of Alibaba to. And they're already implementing a lot of the technology now. Gotcha. So we're behind in the U.S. I think I think we are. I mean, my phone's still 4G. Yeah. Think about this. So in uh, 2007, they came out with 2007, 2008. They came out with the iPhone, mm-hmm. and that was 3G. I think the three largest companies were AT and T, Exxon, Microsoft. Okay. All right. 4G comes out. I remember the first time someone ever told me about 4G. It was Gene Beckman. Okay. And he said, yeah. it's fast, right? Uh-huh. 4G came out, and that created the birth of the FANG stocks. Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Apple. Really? Right? Now, these are the top of market cap. Sure. Mm-hmm. It changed our entire world economy. Wow. From going from 3G to 4G, because now you have a device that connects you to Facebook, Google, sure. you're able to do all these things. Right. And think about what it gave way to as far as app creation. Correct. I mean, you're able to get on-demand cat videos anytime <laughs> you want. That, with no buffering. Fast. Buffer, and no I buffering know. in 1080p. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, if, if, if the network itself can change the market cap or the highest market cap stocks in the U.S. That's interesting. Then there's going to be, unless those stocks or on the forefront of 5G, mm-hmm. they're not going to be the highest market cap stocks in five years. Interesting. And the point is is that China's already set themselves up with their companies to be the largest companies in the world. Wow. And so, and the whole thing about 5G is there's essentially no latency, meaning like it is as fast as you can think. It's it's incredible when you when you think about like the eat on it on it on your mom gets on the phone and it's like right are you trying to use the internet I'm trying to use the damn it mom get up yeah exactly trade stock and now you're going to like the human brain can't keep up with the connectivity right devices per square mile 4G supports ten thousand devices per square mile uh huh 5G supports three million wow wow ten thousand to 3 million. And so, and the whole thing is that there'll be more connected devices, more connected devices, a device for every person. So there are people who are in the know who are saying, who are saying that in cities by 2022, Mm -hmm. 
everything is going to be done through facial recognition. I went to Walmart last night and I noticed that the camera was drawing a square around my face uh-huh. whenever I was checking out. Right. It's already doing it. Mm-hmm. And they're saying that in uh, in Beijing and different places, this is already happening to where everything's operating, operating off of facial recognition. 5G supports way more devices so that as you're walking down the street, your Uber, which could be a Tesla that's automated, yeah, pulls up directly to you because every camera has already uh, geo-pinpointed your exact location on the sidewalk. And not only that, he said that you could walk outside and say, I want an Uber. You don't have a device. You don't have an iPhone. You don't have a, an Android. It's all there. It's just out in public. You just say it. And it recognizes your face, flags the, the, the closest car, brings it to you. I was reading something. I'm sure, or I, was, I can't remember. It's just refreshing my memory, though, or it's making me think of. There was something guys talking about, like, mind control. Was this what's his name? This was uh, this was the guy that was on Joe Rogan. Who was it? Um, the crazy dude. The uh, oh, Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Yeah, five G. Yeah, mind control that they use the signals to control your mind and all that kind of He's stuff. He's crazy, but then he has enough information that turns out to be right. Yeah, that you wonder whether or not you're crazy, well, like the frogs, the transgender frogs, right? Where they change, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or it's, um, he crazy. was talking about uh, what spiders that have. Uh, like body armor, uh, uh, human, human pig, human pig hybrids, humanoids. That's what he called them. Humanoids. humanoids. (laughs) Did you ever see, uh, because on Joe Rogan, evidently pretty soon after that, Dr. Phil was on. And so they spliced. Oh my Alex Jones with Dr. Phil, with Dr. Phil. And he was, he would go nuts. And Dr. Phil would go, you see, you just lose me when you do that. <laughs> it was great, man. So I, I don't know what it means for China on 5G. I don't know what it means, but it's pretty crazy. And I know that we're fixing to go through an evolution. I'm excited because I'm like, as an entrepreneur, yeah, there's opportunities here to, oh, to, sure. to seize. There's going to, there are going to be new apps. There are going to be new things that we take advantage of. Right. There's going to be think, new stocks to buy, new things to invest in. Yeah. I think colleges are in trouble. I mean, from the one thing that I'd seen, because you just think about it, it's no different, like from the terms of latency, the ability to record, the ability to proliferate, proliferate education mm-hmm. is a big deal. Mm-hmm. The other thing too, I wonder, I just wonder whether or not the best surgeons in the world 20 years from now are going to be the best gamers. Just think about it. It could be, it could well, be. They're, they're obviously, they're more, you know, they, they're used to controls or used to everything. Surgeries are going robotic anyway. I'm not saying you don't need a you don't need a doctor there who understands medicine. Yeah, but I mean, you if you have a guy, you may have a you may have a 17 year old who's been performing quote unquote that surgery with complications for 10 years. Yeah, have you tried to dual analog control? So you had a you had a single analog you mean came like out. Nintendo. Well, you had you had Nintendo <laughs> that was a directional pad on Nintendo, and they had a single analog came out with N sixty four, and the Xbox and the PlayStation sure. was the dual analog, mm-hmm. and a lot of people had a hard time making that leap. Sure, well, because there's a lot of precision and a lot of coordination right. that's required. When I was in college, I used to play Call of Duty on Xbox for eight hours a day, uh-huh. and it was a, it was a real problem. That's why I sold my Xbox. Right, don't even want one in the house. Right, and I was good. Right. I would go online and beat all these kids, Uh beat all these other uh, college age kids, these 12 year olds, all of them, right? Talk trash. I got on Fortnite the other day. I couldn't even control. I mean, I was dying. Yeah. I I was like, this can't, this is not fun. Right. This is not fun. Right. And I, and I tried to play a different game that was downloaded on Xbox and um, the TV just died completely. I I tried to uh, download a different game on Xbox. And play it, nothing, nada. No. Couldn't do it. Um, just kept just kept getting beat over and over and over and over again. I think it's uh, the video wasn't playing, huh. so the TV timed out. Yeah. But I kept getting beat over and over and over again. And I used to be good, and now I'm not even bottom of the barrel. It's crazy. So the so these kids have this level of precision to where they get, you know, they're they're taking this one little reticle and right. putting it on a moving target, right. And shooting you, you're shooting your character in the head from right. across. I'm trying to pick up like life, right? <laughs> or like a shield, or like what button do I push? Right. And I'm just dead. So I mean, their their hand eye coordination 
There can't be, there, there, there's, I can make a statement. There's never been a generation like this generation that yeah. has better hand eye coordination. But you think about it with the 5G, I mean, it would all be real time. And so there's no, I mean, you really could, robotic surgeries and stuff like that could get way more that way. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and so it'd really be depending on, heck, the rope. You can get like a 12 year old to do your vasectomy. Yeah, but the 12 year old won't have to do it because he just have to program the robot. That's right. That's the way Neuralink works because Neuralink, uh, Elon Musk's Elon Musk's Neuralink is using, you know, those that that precision right. method to go in your head, and the robot's right. doing it because said a human hand can't right hold a scalpel that still or yeah. whatever. So it's incredible. And that's th- the old thing that's uh, they said the company in the future will have one man and one dog. The dog's the man's job will be there to, to feed the to feed the dog, or the man's job would be to feed the dog. The dog's job is to bite the man if he touches anything. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but it's crazy because I think to think about making the leap again from 2007 to current. Yeah, and from current going forward. Well, to think that the speed is going to slow down is foolish. Oh I mean, no, that. I mean, you got to. You don't have to look at much history to understand that's not what's going to happen. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I mean, it's. If you're not keeping up with it every day, you're falling behind. Right. I mean, you're falling behind. Um, people are marketing in a, in a way that's incredible. Mm-hmm. They're able to tag you. They're able to to. Uh, they're already able to detect everywhere you go. It's just the problem with five G is that right now there's some semblance of privacy. Mm-hmm. Some uh, because Androids are made in the U.S. Sure. Apples are made in the U.S. Remember they had that San Bernardino incident where they were trying to get the information off right. the person's phone, but they said it's an invasion of privacy. Right. And then well, all of a sudden they were like, no, nah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Well, what happens when the devices that we buy are made in China? Or we don't have a device at all, but all of the connected connectivity is linked from a c- computer made in China. Who owns that data? Who has access to that data? Mm-hmm. Can you control a nation by controlling the nation's data? Or their brainwaves. <laughs> that's right or they're human pig hybrid right exactly yeah i mean that's 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 another thing so i mean that has to be playing in the connectivity the speed of data the advertising has to be playing into cyber monday results what happened over this past thanksgiving as far as new retail just, sales i mean they're getting used to it right every year they break a new record as far as right. retail sales you know why uh retail sales continue to go up because of me Oh, because you're buying more and more and more for the kids. That's all we do. That's yeah. all we do is buy. We're not going anywhere. You see the traffic? It's terrible. Why would I do that? Yeah. Online retail sales. Correct. Yeah. No one wants to go out there and go to to fight on Black Friday no for way. something at the mall. No way. I went to the mall last night to get a wallet just because the little park I took Warren to was close. Yeah. Dead. Wow. Dead on a, well, yesterday was Cyber Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Dead. No one there. Wow. They were people, online. The people there were on their phones buying stuff from Amazon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The guy working behind the counter was looking at his phone, being like, "Oh man, I look can at find crap in here." Look at this Cyber Monday. Dude, this deal. is far on the other side of the damn mall. I'm not walking yeah. over there. Screw that. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what just happened. Mail it to me. Do you, do you think that will, that trend will continue? Do you think yeah. it'll just keep going to where eventually there's no brick and mortar stores, or, well, it's, or it's so small? I think it'll be small. I think that there's still. I mean, this is kind of fun to go to the mall. And walk around and buy a pair of shoes and be able to see the shoes and try them on. And so I think that's good. Uh, also, there was something on, uh, I think Sunday morning, was talking about they're converting malls to these places where it's like a food type destination in certain cities to where you go in. There's all this incredible food to where they're bringing in these. So they're, they're doing some stuff that's, they're just going to have to remake the mall, though. That people aren't there to buy, you know, you're not there to buy a comforter anymore. Yeah. It's another example of people not keeping up with the trends. Some some did. Some retailers kept up with the trends. Sure. Amazon started running away on with e commerce and, right. and and Walmart said not on our watch. Right. And now people go online now, and buy from Walmart. That's true. And um I think that I mean Amazon is great, but I am pretty interested in the targets and the Walmarts mm-hmm. and their approach towards it. I mean, they obviously got beat to the punch, but I don't know. I, for a long time, I was like, Amazon, Amazon's just going to own the world. I don't think so anymore because they also have challenges. Like when you look at some of their products and stuff like that, I don't know. I mean, you don't, because you're not, I don't think they have as nearly the level of control over the product line that they have as like a Costco or a yeah. Walmart. And then when you, if you're probably looking at prices, my bet it's not a whole lot different 
than the two. And so, I mean, if I go, well, I go to Costco all the time, as many kids as I have. Um, and we trust it. It's great. Yeah. Where Amazon really won out was the distribution centers. Oh, man. And and the thought behind those distribution centers and the efficiency of those things to where you order something, standard two-day shipping. Mm-hmm. But if I want it tomorrow, I can find something on my phone that I want in my hands tomorrow morning. Yeah. And it's there. Right. For low cost. I know. And and, and so I've, I saw some behind-the-scenes footage and some uh, some documentary footage on the distribution centers and how they function. Yeah. I mean, that is it's a nuts. well-oiled machine. It's like last night because, you, know, you know, I'm Catholic. And so Advent candles. I don't know where to get Advent candles. Right. But, you know, I know that I could hit that thing and they're going to be there tomorrow. That's great. You know, versus going, I mean, it would take hours to try to find something like that. Yeah, and and you, and then you get to review the advent candle, figure right. out who who gave what four stars, five stars, read right. their reviews, right? Figure out talk. You get to you know hear the input from someone who had an advent candle that broke six months after sure. they bought it, or put it in a box, and then next right. Christmas, it's, right? And you filter the results by most popular, highest right. rated, right? It's you actually you actually burn all the advent candles and just. Oh, you burn them all? That's just, that's just, that's just man, you're just, you're just throwing them yeah, away. Just keep them. Let's just stock these things up. I thought it was something you lit. You don't burn them all. You have to, you have to burn them all the way down? Well, you don't have to burn them all the way down, but you're going to start over probably again next year. Oh, uh, so you don't use it? No, not really. Yeah, but you have a lot of money. You well, think people with less money reuse their Advent candles? I don't know, man. I mean, it's a candle. So, I but mean, it's not in, too in, steep. In America, you're probably, I mean, if you're buying them in the first place, you're probably okay to to throw them out when yeah. they're pretty much done. At the end I, of the year. I threw away some expensive candles in our pumpkins this year because they oh. rotted around the candle. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And what Taylor think about that? No, she was she was pro throwing oh, it away. It was disgusting. Oh. It had that goo. Yeah. I mean, our our pumpkins went bad in like four days. I know. I was thinking that's oh, you know four or five days before Halloween we're good. Yeah. No, it turned into mush. We have uh, we have some on the back porch that are on the um. This is how terrible. I just don't pay attention to some stuff. Well, they are, they're there. I guess they were there for kind of Thanksgiving. They weren't, they weren't jack lanterns, right? They weren't cut. And so they, oh, so you didn't carve them yet. No, no, no. They were just small ones. They were out on the back porch and it's about, I don't know, about mid November. I walked by and I went, huh, there's pumpkins out here on the table. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I don't know how damn long those pumpkins have been there. They've been there a long time. And I mean, I could see them literally every day. Yeah. Cause you can see right on the back porch. I said, Laura, this is a terrible question. Like, how how long have the pumpkins been there? She was like, they've been there a little while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, she wouldn't even tell me how long. But. I did that at our house. I walked by and said, when do, when do we get that picture? Is that picture new? <laughs> Taylor was like, yeah. Like two months ago. That was, <laughs> right. been, I was like, that has not been. So you've been walking by that picture for two months. It's crazy. How's she doing, by the way? Oh, she's good. good. She's pregnant and six months pregnant, six and a half months pregnant. Mm-hmm. Baby's good. Um, she, she she feels better. She took that fall this past week, and uh, she's feeling better. Her arm. So what we found, the bruises will tell you where you hit, right? So her whole arm and elbow and everything Ugh. when she fell, it turned it's bruised. So I was like, okay, well now we know where you landed, right? Um, but no, everything's good. She goes and gets the baby checked out tomorrow. You thinking that your insurance is actually going to pay for the pregnancy? <laughs> yeah, it pays. <laughs> it pays for the, that's that's what I was going to say. So she goes tomorrow, uh-huh. and we go in and um. I, you know, I, had, I don't, I don't even give much thought to like what it costs because she gets these. Um, Cause you're rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Especially co- relative to that chart you sent me. My oh, goodness. Man, I know, if you live right? in America, you're rich. I know. Good grief. But um, I was going to say MRI. It's not an MRI with ultrasound. Ultrasound. When they do yeah. the ultrasounds, thousands of dollars every time. If Is you had, really? if, if you had to, if you had to just incur that bill. Wow. Um, but. For some people, the costs aren't covered at all by the insurance, and, right. and there's women that are finding that out, right, all throughout the country. What they're finding out is that so, so young couples are getting married. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you did this. I did this. You, you get married when you come out of school. Sure. Well, now you can stay on your parents' insurance plan until you're 26 years old. Right. Regardless of marital status. Regardless of marital status. Right. Right. So I didn't know that until not too long ago. Mm-hmm. I thought if you got married. But no, you can stay on the plan. Yeah, I obviously didn't keep up with it either because I was thinking if you weren't in school, you couldn't. Right. That changed. And so right. you could be out of school, married, and on your parents' plan. So it makes sense for a lot of young couples mm-hmm. to stay on your parents' plan until you're 26 sure. years old. Sure. But what people are finding out now is I think the average 
age of the uh, of a woman's first pregnancy, the average age that they are is twenty six. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if it's a bell curve, that's you're going to average. That's an Half average, them, yeah. right? You're going to have right. a lot that are younger. That's right. A lot that are older. But um, my niece is nineteen. Mm-hmm. And she's pregnant, so I mean, it, it happens for sure. What they're finding out is that a lot of these plans don't cover maternity costs yeah. for dependents, Correct. for adult dependents. Right. So if you're on a plan, you're do depend- they for child dependents? Well, that was the thing that that was that's a logical question, right? right? What constitutes an adult, right, on the policy? And if a child gets pregnant, do they cover it? Yeah. So what I what I saw was that it, the the plans don't cover adult dependents maternity costs. Gotcha. So in this one case, there's this girl that went to the doctor. She got pregnant. She's on her parents' plan. Yeah. That's great. Glad we have insurance. Right. Went to the very first um, prenatal. That's what they call it. The very first prenatal screening. Right. $4,000 bill. Oh, my gosh. We don't cover that. Insurance doesn't cover that. The Their policy specifically right. didn't cover it. I mean, I can't imagine because if there's anything wrong, you have to go in for weekly scans. Right. And see, I've had some of these conversations about where that kind of decision's made mm-hmm. at the employer level. So the employer's going, you know, they're looking at this, and you, you think about, you know, what are they called? They're called benefits, mm-hmm. called employee benefits, employee benefits. And so this ends up in a conversation that you will have with the CFO and stuff, and they're looking at where their costs are going, like how they might design their plans. And so you know that you want to offer something to employees. And so the the second level of question is, okay, we have to help the employees with their their family, yeah. their spouse, and their kids. But, I mean, I kind of get it, like, to go, okay, now, wait a minute. Now your kids are on your plan still. It's a twenty. It's a grown person. Right. It's a 25-year-old grown person or a 22-year-old grown person. And they're going to get married. They could have a job. They could be on their spouse's plan or whatever. And then they get pregnant. Now I have to, like, I have the, the premature baby of – the child of mm. my employee. It's like, at what level does it end? Imagine if you're self-funded and you're having to yes. track those claims. Right. Like, there's a dependent of this employee. Right. That has. I, I mean, mean that's that, a real thing that happens. That's a huge cost. Oh my gosh, uh, it can be preterm delivery. Oh and then, God, yeah. Uh, and then a stint in the ICU for that hundreds baby. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh man. Yeah. And guess what? If anything's wrong with that baby, and you know, well, Chronic, I guess, chronically, I guess the baby wouldn't be on. I don't know, I have to think about that. With the pregnancy, with the baby itself, because the baby itself, you wouldn't be a grandparent. Like You wouldn't be able to cover your grandchildren unless you were the guardian. There's probably a limit on that. Mm-hmm. But still, you start back up. You go, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. So tw- my, tw- my employees, 20-something-year-old kids get married, and then they get pregnant. And as an employer, I had to pay for that, too. Yeah. So I get it. I get it why they don't. But if they're doing that, they need to make sure they communicated it well. But just because you communicated it well doesn't mean anybody listened. Yeah. So so the the stats are that there's 4.2 females that are in the age range, 4.2 million females in the age range of, say, 18 to 26. Right. That That's, I mean, childbearing age. Right. That could be susceptible, could be susceptible right. to this. I guess it depends on the policy, yeah. the carrier, all that kind of stuff. So there's millions of people, and I and I couldn't help but think, if that's the case, um, that could have been averted by someone coming out to them and saying, "Hey, here are the costs you're going to incur." Like if there was transparency. Oh gosh, yeah. Like if, if there was, which right. we're not going to get on that again. But I mean, we've talked about it every podcast, right? About the healthcare transparency. Yeah, exactly. Where that could have helped there, or she could have gone to the exchange if money was an issue, which it obviously was. Mm-hmm. She could have gone to the exchange. Mm-hmm. Let if she could have filed a separate tax sure. qualified subsidy, right, and guarantee you, guarantee right. you, she would have had. You and know, you own a company that would probably be willing to do that ACA reporting. Exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. We'll create the actual tax we'll, forms. We'll for do her. it for three times the normal cost too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Three times the normal cost, just so you know the quality is right where it needs to be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I was I was looking at that. I couldn't help but look at that article. I was reading that article on open enrollment. We've talked about these different topics, but I was reading an article about the girl that was affected by right. that. And then the top article to the right of it was just simply, what is an HMO? Huh. And, it's, and it had all these different comments and, and things like that where people, I guess because of open enrollment, uh-huh. are just trying to figure out what an HMO is. Interesting. Yeah, so, so what is an HMO? Well, I'm actually curious why people are even, why that would even be trending. 
It's kind of interesting. Now, because in different markets, though, there are different, like, in South Carolina, there's there's really no HMOs to speak of. There aren't, and there are. It's, it's kind of a – talk about, like, what the history of it is. Mm-hmm. And other people who are – maybe students of exactly everything. I'm just going to tell you what's happened, what happened in the market. Okay. Used to be that you could go anywhere you wanted to. All right. And that was just pure indemnity insurance back in the seventies and all that. And I don't even know the time frames exactly, but you go wherever you want. And so you had a health insurance plan. It wasn't anything like it is now, meaning in terms of cost. Mm. Um, my old, uh, guy I knew uh, when I first was a benefit broker, well, God, 20 plus years ago, or about 20 years ago at this point, was an old guy from James Island, South Carolina, named Dale Bostick. And Dale would say, you know, nobody's going to pay $10 per month for health insurance. <laughs> he said, that's what they used to say. Yeah. He was old when I met him first. And he remembers delivering when premium was like five bucks a month. Yeah. Too. And that was just, if you went to the doctor, you paid, and then you'd be able to get you, submit a claim and get your money back. Then they said, well, what we need to do is we're going to have these these networks. We're not going to use everybody. We're going to have a preferred kind of network. And so we're going to, you're, all, you're going to have to go with these doctors, this set of doctors. And, is, and that's that's a health maintenance? I'm not there yet. That was a PPO. That was a PPO. That was a preferred provider organization. And then their guy, I guess it was maybe the 90s, was really what became the HMO market, the health maintenance organizations. And the whole thought was was a lot of things. We're going to get away from as big as deductibles. We're going to implement copays. We're going to narrow down that network. And unless you are going to an emergency room, you're going to go to these people. Yeah. So you have higher volume inside that organization. And then health maintenance, we're going to work on that. There's preventative care that's covered. There's more stuff that's getting you used to going to the doctor that's designed to reduce cost. And what's really interesting is that some of the insurance carriers, which will go unnamed uh, in various states, that they own both the PPO, like the PPO, and then they built separate companies to be the HMO. It was the same company. Right. Same same pockets, like my left pocket, my right pocket. Can't blame them. Competing with one is genius. Multiple brands. Who oh, does gosh. that? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Who does that? Right. Who has, like, how many, what was the, the ACA reporting? Top 15 vendors in the country. <laughs> right. So you had, so I can't remember who put out, was it? It's uh, Shortlister. Shortlister. Shortlister released. So Shortlister the released the top 15 ACA reporting companies <laughs> yep. in the country. And yours company, and mine too, was three of the top 15, but nobody knows <laughs> which three. <laughs> yeah. It depends on uh, your logo. All right. We were like, we're number three. Great. Well, wait I was a minute. Like, oh, wait, wait, wait. wait we're number we're also number. Mm. Oh. And we're also number. <laughs> and we're number. We're number. <laughs> <laughs> right. I wish this would have gone to 25. And pretty sure. Right. Yeah, exactly. We've got about nine see, more in see there. See how many times we pop up. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That, um, that's that. Yeah. Th- my question on the HMO is like, what are what are like the 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 benefits or, or perks and the drawdowns? And because I'm just trying to get my hands around. So you have the. I the, guess the, were they looking at it? Do you think like for for open enrollment, like which ones to choose? Exactly. Okay. Be, ex, I think that's I think that's why. Yeah. And so you have so it, you have a uh, primary care physician. Sure. Right. So it's just a, yeah. It's just, yeah. You're gonna have to be referred. There's, it's a group of in the primary care physician has yeah, to refer you to a correct. specialist. Yeah. And it's a group of. So, so what is it? your costs are essentially bartered and negotiated down because you're in network. They have the right. in network providers, so therefore well, there's, the, the there's rates gonna be are a network anyway. Right, but it's a much more tight network. Well, that was what was confusing to me. Sure, not not coming from that background yeah. of going, okay, what's the benefit? There's networks. How's this network different? Right, it's a more narrow network. It's cheaper. That's why that's why people look. It's at cheaper it. because to to be in this network, you have an, they negotiate the providers down. Well, that and they're really controlling utilization. A lot. So, in other words, you can't just go. My knee hurts. I want to get a doctor's point with an orthopedic. Your knee hurts, and you're going to go to the guy. You're going to go to the primary care physician. He's going to go. You may need. You may need an Advil first. Let's try the Advil, right? And come back, and then, and they're really going to manage that care. Now, you'll see that some of that stuff, like out in in other markets that I'm not as familiar with, like in California, if Kaiser Permanente, which they are an HMO that own their own doctors and own the hospital. It's all one big baby. And so that's a different animal that I've never 
you know, say are, they have it all. Are these doctors incentivized to keep claims down for the carrier? I think that they are to an extent, but it's not phrased that way. It would be to keep the patients healthier. I know it wouldn't be phrased that sure. way, but like, I'm just wondering if that's, I don't know if, if it's, if it's all doctors though, were pretty, they're pretty above board My, because mm-hmm. I've always had those, those experiences, but the more, when I've ever got a chance to talk to a doctor, they're like, man, we ain't doing anything based on the insurance. We don't care. We're just trying to, we're trying to get away from that crap. Yeah. We're just trying to deliver good medicine. Yeah. Um, but it, that does make sense why people have been looking like my mom's on, a, um, her Medicare supplement is an HMO out of uh, Florida Okay, to where she can only like, she can't go to doctors up here in South Carolina. She has to go in Florida mm. unless it's emergency. It makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. And, and then there's this, I wonder what are the plans that are on, on the exchanges? Are there, are there, I don't know if they're HMOs or not. Uh, there's most of them, like. My experience would be they're probably PPOs, the vast majority, meaning an in work, in network, and out of network benefits. Right. Like you, you can here's a set of providers. You don't have to go to these people though. Like my doctor, that um, you know, she's not in network. She's like a concierge oh, yeah. doc, mm-hmm. and um, at least I don't think she is. Oh no, I, I my uh, bank account has proof that she was not. <laughs> <laughs> I looked into it for sure. She, she was out of network. She's out of network. Uh, yeah. So you had to pay the full cost, but she's worth it. She, you know, she's very worth oh, it. Oh, my God. Mark, you're either, uh, your cholesterol. Oh, this looks terrible. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? We must do this heart test. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> the uh, What's it called? Where the um, um, Calcium buildup? No, that, that scan you have to do. The Widowmaker. Oh, yeah. The Widowmaker. Oh, yeah. yeah she's a push that test, boy. Um, is there a difference between the policies that the haves have and the have nots, especially with the exchange and things like that? Yeah. I mean, I think there's always going to be right. Um, you know, what I, what is I it more pronounced now, I think it's less pronounced, you know, with, because of accessibility to healthcare. Mm-hmm. Now, not everyone is getting coverage. So I don't know what the stats are in terms of, but I mean, the affordable care act, has certainly expanded coverage to people, but it's not a lot of other things too. I mean, you got the Medicaid expansion throughout yep. the states, yes, and so it's 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 a really there's lots of moving parts and pieces kind of going on. I would say that the gaps have been closed um, more just because of accessibility. Yeah, um, but yeah, there's still gaps. Obviously, it's still expensive. Yeah, I mean, that's still. I think that's why that talk track is leading in politics. Is because oh, gosh. it's because we have this divide between the haves and the have-nots. It's confusing as hell. That's really, that might be really one of the large. biggest things. People don't understand it. Yeah, I mean, you start thinking back in history. What what else is there that people that is this complex? And what Donald Trump said: Who knew healthcare was this complex? Anyone with with a pulse yes. who's been paying attention. Yes. You know, it's ridiculously complicated because when I speak and I have a good friend of mine, Ricky, Ricky, you know, he'll, he, he brings a different perspective because he spent a lot of time studying how hospitals look at it. It's totally different than the way mm-hmm. insurance people look at things. Totally different. And guess what? That's where, you, that's where that baby's going to be born. It's very important. Yeah, at that hospital. You know? Yes. Yeah. And so you know, we can think about it, you know, so you've got, everyone has a bit of a different perspective. And um, it's just a really, really complex thing. They say that 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 uh, the separation. So, so you have that complexity, and there's people trying to understand it. There's people who have access to good care, people who don't, and there's a number of of <clears throat> programs that are in place to try to to try to help that. Mm-hmm. But when the politics around healthcare and what's driving politics and political divide, they're saying. That the number one, one of the number one reasons is the actual difference in wages, the af- actual difference in opportunity yeah. that exists in this country, where this gap is wider than it ever has been, and it's one of the largest contributing factors to a recessionary period going forward, or a downturn in our economy, right? And also giving way to, uh, uh, like we talked about, China coming in earlier, yeah, giving access or a, a very clear pathway for another superpower to kind of step up. Right. Because if you have these two separate, so if you have, let's just say the haves and the have nots, right. they're going to vote differently. Right. They align with different political parties. And then there's this spite that exists. The further that gap goes. Yeah, it's a bad idea. Historically, the further that gap goes, 
the worse things get. And like then you the have, Ray Dalio stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it goes from one side to the other. Right. It happens over and over again. It, exactly. Ray Dalio talks about that Correct. all the time. He, Correct. T- he talks about how that's. Well, you've got the Markets in Motion book, right? Yes. So yeah. it's a big old. Why did they make that book so big? It's Mark, like two. Marketing, maybe. I yeah, don't it's know. like two foot wide and like a big old thing. It's like as big as that TV. I'm putting our book in a book bag. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> we need a different bag for this book. You carry this like a briefcase. Yeah. I'm putting a handle on my book. Right. But the basic like the cycles in the markets have been happening just this is what happens. They just cycle. Yeah. Um, I know the books that you've read. It's the same mm-hmm. thing, whether it's 20-year cycles or 100-year cycles that you're looking at. And uh, But yeah, I mean, you don't, I don't know... I don't know that I want to live in a society where there's big gaps. I mean, you go you go visit a third world country. That's what it looks like. Yes. You don't want that. That's yep. not a good idea. And, you know, this country is a whole lot different than it was 15 years ago. You know, when you think about the vast majority of the wealth has been made through investment and through – most of it's not entrepreneurial. There's some of it. But most of it's stock market. So the stock market goes up and housing prices go up. Yep. But if you don't own a stock and you don't own a house – you're doing the same thing you did 15 years ago, and everybody else just got really rich around you. Exactly, and that creates problems. Yeah, speaking of Ray Dalio, I mean he's he's betting on a recession in the next 18, 24 months. And right. I mean, is he right all the time? No, but he's got 18 billion dollars based on his methodology. Sure, he called the last one right, and it's it's like you said, it's been happening. It's been happening over and over. Recessionary periods right. are, are really normal. But the thing that's sticking out, the thing that I think he's trying to raise awareness of, is that this particular circumstance hasn't existed since right before World War II. Uh-huh. And the particular circumstance is the gap between the haves and the have-nots right. that came out of the Roaring Twenties and the, and the subsequent Depression after. Sure. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing that he talks about is uh, the low interest rate. Oh, yeah. So this we, is so, insanity. So we have the low interest rates. So right. typically, if we have a little dip or something like that, we want to boost things. We right. want to make uh, lending easier. We right. just drop the interest rates. Right. But we have multiple places in the world that have negative interest rates, right. and we're going to zero. Correct. So our, our ability to stimulate the economy right. by dropping interest rates doesn't exist. Right. That also happened in the late 30s. Right. And the third thing he talks about is... Um, two superpowers vying for the number one position, which goes back to the China 5G. thing. That goes back. Five G is one way that seems to be a little bit transparent, sure. but it's a number of things. Sure. To where, you know, people have trade war and yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. He also talks about that about the three or four different types of war: uh, the trade war, the war, uh, the technology war, and uh-huh. all that kind of stuff. All of it's kind of rising up with China. It's that perfect storm that existed sure. right before World, World War Two. Right. So that's the those are the differentiators as we get into that cycle, that economic cycle, of saying okay, there's a recession, a recession, t- tons of opportunity coming out of oh, the recession, gotcha. right? But could this be different? And sure. what are we looking at? Right. Not being doom and gloom, but right. Knowing that this kind of stuff exists, and if nothing else, you can be aware of the possibility, so you can seize the opportunity. I mean, you got to know it's going to happen. Oh, it's going to happen. Period. It's, it's going to happen. And the, the whole thought that you can prevent it, mm. I think, is yeah. But we are in the largest expansion, or the, is is it the largest expansion in history? Or the, yeah, I don't know. The second largest. It might be the largest it's a now. Long one. So when I think of that, I'm like, okay, well, that's saying you blew the balloon up larger than ever before. Right. Exactly. So the air comes out of the balloon at some point. That's right. Faster if you blow it up that long. Correct. Well, um, the whole goal is, as we know, you know, the way that we've been taught is that you blow into a balloon, you let a little air out, and then you can blow in, and it can get bigger than it was the first time. That's right. You let some air out, and it can get bigger, bigger, bigger. It's a cycle up and down, right. and up and down. But if it's all straight, uh, that's why people freak out when the stock market goes down. Yeah. It's supposed to go down. Oh, yeah. Like what, 20% of the time, 25% of the time? Yeah, so I think about it like a battering ram. Mm-hmm. Like if you're trying to beat a door down, let's just call it a new record level. Right. You know, back up a little bit, get some momentum before you hit it that next time. Right. Right? You get more momentum, you have a, a better chance of busting through exactly. and then going to the next door. Exactly. But, uh, but yeah, it's it's interesting. It's something to, to, to be aware of, I think. Well, you think about it. We go into a time with that's recessionary. 
and things are difficult, mm-hmm. that's when you're going to see things like healthcare change, I think, pretty dramatically. Mm. Or there'll be the cha- the chances for it to change pretty dramatically. Yeah. Because you just you think about, it, like, if let's just say right now we don't go back to 2008, but it's halfway there or a third of the way there. And so then you have this big divide and your people are losing their jobs. So more and more people are coming off health care. There's, there's a populist type idea of more access to health care, more ability for people to get health care. It's just becoming more of a right. Yeah. I mean, the, a recession, like a recession uh, by all accounts is the number one threat. To, to to Trump right now in his presidential seat yeah. and is and is vying for the presidential reelection. Right. A recession is bad news for him. Right. And it and it doesn't necessarily it, it's it's not it's not tied to his performance. Like it's it's going to happen no matter who's right. in the White House. Like it's it's right. gonna happen. Uh one of the points is though, like how he fixed with the quantitative easing, trying to come out of the last one. Sure. Well, if you do quantitative easing now, like say, okay, well, we're gonna buy more of these stocks. Sure. Which makes the people who own stocks wealthier. Sure. They take that money, they reinvest it. Correct. They become wealthier, Correct. and the gap gets and, wider. Right. And then the companies make more money, but instead of returning into dividends, they just do stock repurchases. They which repurchase makes the stock their, goes up. Yeah, repurchase their own stock. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And which, you can't drop interest rates. No. It, so it's uh, it's right. interesting. And if you're finding ways, you know, if you're you're pumping more, anytime you're pumping more money into the economy. A lot of it's going to be probably finding housing. So housing prices are going up. Mm-hmm. It's now these people are really getting squeezed. Yeah. If you take the uh, the median housing price and you track it for the last 100 years, it creates a chart that ebbs uh-huh. and flows, right? And if you create a channel, right, it, it, there's a perfect channel this thing creates over the last 100 years. Are we at the top? We're outside the top now. <laughs> so what happened was you had this... 2000, 2008, yep. dropped down to the bottom of that channel. Uh huh. Then it came up, it touched the top, wobbled a little bit, and then went out the top. And in some places, I get the housing prices haven't recovered. Sure. But the truth is, is that the median housing price in the United States, now this is all of the United States. Sure. Someone who lives in LA or New York would be like, what? Tell me where yeah, that is. Yeah. But the median housing price was uh, like $210,000 or something yeah. like that. We're at like 330, 335 wow. now. So if you look at that chart. Man, just think about that. If you are if you make $40,000 a year, how do you afford? You can't afford $300,000. No house. way. No way. That arithmetic does 60, not 000, work. 60000 So you make $70,000 as a, as a family, like a husband and wife, both yeah, working. And you have a $2,000 house payment. Golly. $2,000. So you have to, so 20, let's just say 2,500 a month before taxes that, that goes towards house before utilities, just paying your mortgage. And so what is that? 30,000 a year, 30,000 a year of, of your income. So if you have 70 grand, 30,000 is going straight to your mortgage. Sure. You haven't even paid your light bill yet. Yeah. You haven't bought any groceries or gas. No transportation. Yeah. I mean, you think about it. I, I want to live. I really do want to live in. I don't want to live in a world or in a country where everything is given to everyone. Mm-hmm. I don't want that, right? But at the same time, I don't want I don't want people in the streets either. You know, it's just hard. It's a hard. There is no good answer, right? You know, because you go, well, they just need to get off there. You know what? And just work. Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes that's true. Yeah, that's the answer. And sometimes it's a lot more. It's ninety percent of the time it's more complicated than that. Yeah, blanket statements are hard. Yeah, I know. Um, because you can always find the example of one or the other. I know. And yeah, there's plenty of people not working hard. There's plenty of people oh not trying. Gosh. There's plenty of people not seizing the opportunity. Correct. Uh, you talk about the education and the availability of information. Yeah, yeah. There's people who are using YouTube to look at cat videos. You yeah, joked exactly. about that versus learning a new skill That's or exactly a new trade right. or learning how to be a, a brain surgeon. You can learn how sure. to be a freaking brain surgeon online Surgeons right now. Surgeons are doing that. Like yeah. that's where they go to learn. Oh, that's a good idea. Exactly. I'll do that on my next brain Exactly. Surgery. And people are l- watching prank videos. Yeah. They're spending their time mm-hmm. consuming prank videos versus right a marketable skill that contributes back to society right and then other people are really busting their butt and they don't know where to put their efforts but they are working 70 80 hours a week and unfortunately that the wage that they're getting for their manual labor sure. job isn't enough to even afford a median household or a median yeah yeah median price of a house in the United States that to me is messed up and i mean historically i've always been the guy that went come on just work two jobs just yeah. work three just work four jobs yeah. because that's what i would do but as i've gotten older i just gotten 
that's just not everybody. Everyone's not going to do that. Now, I'm not saying that. Now, would it piss me off if I go into that guy's house? He's got a 50-inch TV. Yeah, mm-hmm. that ain't right. We don't need no Obama phones. We don't need no none of that. We don't need no iPhones. Yeah. We don't need all that. But, you know, good grief. There's got to be. We, we, but at the same time, we got to be able to do better for, you know, I'm, I'm aware of a situation of um of a family that it's just pretty tragic. Like the, the their life circumstances that they're in is just pretty bad. And you could argue that some of it was due to their decisions. Yeah. But you could also argue against it too. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. It's just, it's a hard thing from a societal standpoint to try to make that decision of, you know, I don't know, like how much money do we want to spend is really what it's going to come down to. Yeah. So that's the, that's the trick is it's a case by case study. Right. And it's different for each person. But when you make legislation, it applies to everyone. Yeah. So you're putting this blanket over everyone. Right. When all of their cases. It's not going to work. They're subtly different. Yeah. They're subtly It's not going to work. Like work meaning in every case. Exactly. And there's criminals. There's criminals in government. There's criminals in corporations. There's uh-huh. criminals up the street. There's criminals in churches mm-hmm. and criminals in schools. Criminals in this room. Yeah. <laughs> that guy, right? <laughs> yeah. Him? Yeah. So, so it's, uh, but you don't know Where the rate. my wallet? Yeah. <laughs> You don't know the you don't know the ratio of criminals. I know, right? So I'm not saying that everyone's criminals. No way, right? But the point is, is like someone's going to exploit it. Sure. So do we just know that going in and say, look, we're going to make this rule, and I know you're going to exploit it. I know you're going to take advantage of it, but that's on you. Yeah. But if this is what's required to get the people who need help help, yeah, that's the price we pay. I think that's that's what you know. When I've given people money, like if I you see somebody on. You know, street or something, you give them money. Some people will go, well, don't give them any money. They're just going to go buy, you know, a beer with it or Mm -hmm. liquor with it. It's none of my business, though. Yeah. Yeah. Some will. Some will. Some will. But some you, will, you can't but guarantee how do you know? that. Yeah. How do you know which one? Yeah, even the do one you really that did want it. to be that person? Yeah. Take, take the religious stuff out of it. But do you really want to be the guy at the end of your life who's like, man, I feel really good about the fact that I stiffed all those people on the streets? It's like, is that really what you want? Right. You know? If they do that, who cares? But, you know, focus on you. Mm-hmm. you know, are you better because of it? And I don't know if that extends to a society or not. Uh, I know those Norwegian societies are pretty damn happy. Like the happiest people in the world. Right. On the earth. Yeah. Yeah, and there's there's this idea, and, I, and I've said it plenty of times, like contribute to society. You need mm-hmm. to contribute to society. But what if the society you're contributing to is so corrupt? What if the, the, side, the, the certain areas of the society that you're contributing to aren't aligned with what you want to, you right. see what I mean? So you, yeah, contribute to society, but you're like, I'm contributing to this machine. Yes. Yeah, like when your civic duties conflict with your moral duties. Oh, yes. Yeah. I had one of those recently. Uh huh. I know what you're talking about. I know. Yeah. That's a tough one. It's a tough, that's why, that's why there are these politics that exist. But I mean, if the wage gap continues to, to, to expand, yeah, you know that more people are going to be left behind right. than get on board. Right. But every vote is equal. Oh, yeah. So now, but not everybody votes. Not everyone votes. Of course, like in the, the founding fathers, you had to be a property owner. You had to be a stock owner. Yeah. You got to have stock in Apple to vote. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and in plenty of places, the dead people vote. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That's a whole a lot of that's registered a, that's voters. A, that's who another been around for, who haven't been around for years. Right. To bring, Crooks, right? Crooks in government, crooks in everywhere. They exist. So we get to choose what we focus on. That's yeah. where I come down to. Yeah. You get to choose what you focus on. There are crooks everywhere. Sure. But there are great and wonderful people everywhere, sure. too. There are good, aspiring, passionate, loving. Right. Every adjective I can use that's positive. Right. Those people exist, too. Right. And I, uh, I, can, fall, I can fall into the trap very easily of focusing on just the bad. Sure. Without balancing out with. Right. Is it worth it? Is it is it worth if you pass legislation that someone I don't know, but if you pass legislation that someone exploits, yeah, is it worth letting them exploit it to benefit this person that's worth every dime? Sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it's very easy to go no, and then you go okay, that person's your mom. Ooh, now it changes. Well, maybe, maybe that person's your son. That person's your right. That person is a veteran that came back with PTSD, yeah. and both his legs missing right and uh can't afford to right. to live in a, a decent home correct and they're just messed up mentally and we don't you know mm-hmm. we yeah yeah exactly yeah that's where it gets very complicated 
So um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not certainly not a socialist, but I go, God, you know, we got to be able to find a way to do better. Mm. We got to be able to to stop focusing on tweets at some point and actually yes do something because you think about we're okay we're in the largest expansion right the, the second largest whatever mm-hmm. and we can't afford to do these things right there's never going to be enough money yeah there's there's always going to be you know there's always going to be a competition whether it's in my own household my own wallet or somebody else's exactly wallet, it's always going to be that's a personal lesson and a social lesson correct. there's never enough money correct and what you don't want to do is get to where it's so bad that the people on the bottom end of it just come take it from you. That's the problem. Because that's that's when you also, go to get in your car, right? And someone takes says, your car, right? They just beat you in the head and say, you know, I, wa- I was waiting on the government to give you a car, but I figured, I figured I'd just take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your front door is held by a, a deadbolt that's this right. big, and so and I just heard, kick that in and eat your food out of your refrigerator. And I, I have a friend that he said he said, well, I got I got a solution for that. You know, I said, you know, when um, you know, when you get robbed in the Walmart parking lot, he said, well, I have a concealed carry permit. I just kill that person on the spot. I said, okay, what about your daughter? She? Yep. No, she doesn't. So she's the one who gets robbed there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's there's benefits to having a civil society more than it's, you can't boil everything down you to go that way. the value of your portfolio yeah. and how much cash exactly. you got in your wallet. Any, it, the best martial artist, just as an example, the best martial artist in the world – Say that the number one thing you should do is avoid a fight, avoid right. violence, right? Avoid conflict, right? So to your point, if there's anything you can do to avoid those bad scenarios, yeah, that's more favorable than going down that road. Yeah, totally, hundred percent of the time. Knocked it out. Good man. Now you just do this. Yeah, I like that. You we can, you we can re- you want to turn yours off? Yeah.